Greetings, Rob Adelson here, Learning Technology Specialist and Blackboard Administrator for St. Peter's University. My role at St. Peter's is to work with faculty and students to make sure you have the technology tools that you need for your classes and know how to use them. I'm also known by the following names on campus. I get called that one a lot. I'm so sorry I couldn't join you live today, but I'm very excited to demonstrate some of the key tools you'll be using when taking classes at St. Peter's and how to use them. First, we'll talk about how to set up your initial password and reset it later on using our React system. We'll also discuss how to access your St. Peter's email account called Peacock Mail. Next up is Blackboard, then Spirit Online, our portal for registration, grades, payment, and more. Then. We'll discuss some of the collaboration tools you'll be using in your classes. And finally, how to get help and support if you have any technical questions. There's three things that I want to mention before we get started. I'll be referring to several common terms throughout this presentation. First is the user ID username, which is typically your first initial followed by your last name and a number. For example, if your name is Pavin Peacock and you're a new freshman who just joined in 2020, your ID may look like PPCOF20. Next, the St. Peter's University email account, or Peacock Mail. This is your username, followed by at stpeters.edu. Finally, your Spirit ID. This is your official identification number given to you by the university. It's a seven digit number that starts with either zero or one. At St. Peter's, we use an ID card called a One Card. This card, in addition to helping you get into buildings and classrooms on your campus, has some helpful information on the back. Your username, your email address, and your Spirit ID number. University staff may need you to provide this when helping you to verify your identity. Keep in mind your Spirit ID number is considered private information. So treat it the same as if you were a bank account number or a social security number. When accessing the St. Peter's website and your courses on Blackboard, we strongly recommend that you use the Google Chrome browser. If you do not have this or you're not sure how to get this on your device, contact our IT staff and we'll be happy to help you. I'll be covering how to reach out to them shortly. Alternatively, you can use Safari, Mozilla Firefox or Microsoft Edge, but students and faculty usually have a much better experience with our technology using Chrome. Under no circumstances should you use Internet Explorer as a browser unless explicitly told by your professor. At this point, I want to show you how to get help and information beyond this short video tutorial. If you go to our IT portal, you can access our knowledge base for articles, training, tutorials, and resources, as well as chat with a virtual assistant to help you get the information you need. Just go to stpeters.edu slash ITS slash client portal. You can search for articles by clicking at the top of the screen and typing out what you're looking for. I've also added a QR code here as well, so you can scan it with your mobile device and go straight to the website. If you can't find what you're looking for in our knowledge base, you can contact us for direct support on any technical questions or issues you are facing. Send an email to servicedesk at stpeters.edu or call 201-761-7800. We're available 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Fridays. Now, let's go into how to set up your access. We have a pretty good deal going. Nearly all services that you'll need at St. Peter's are linked to one account, so you'll just need one password to be set up that covers everything. Go to reset.stpeters.edu to get started. Keep in mind, once you set a password, it'll be valid for 180 days, 6 months. Before this period ends, you'll be asked to update your password for security purposes. You can follow the steps I'm about to show you for both setting up your initial password then changing it later on when you need to. You'll need to know your username and your Spirit ID number in order to get started here. 
there's a little instructional video in the upper right corner that I made. If you get lost during this process, click on it and it'll show you step by step how to complete this. Here's the React page. Let's get started by going to Password Reset and clicking Go to Reset Tool. From here, put in your SPU username. Then click Continue. The first time that you set up your password, you should authenticate with challenge questions. Make sure this option is selected and then click Continue. You'll be asked to answer three challenge questions. Typically, they ask for your spirit ID number, the month and year of your birth, and the last four digits of your social security. Here's a little sample of how you should put this information in. For example, if you were born on March 26, 2001, for the month and year of your birth, you're going to put in 03-01, the month and then the year. If you're Mr. Burns from The Simpsons and your social security number is 00000000001, you're going to put 0001. Click the orange button after entering these to continue. Here's our password regulations. You must have three of the four in your password an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, a number, a symbol. Password has to have at least eight characters and can have your first name, last name, or username in it. It also can't be exactly the same as your previous password. This is what it looks like once you pass the challenge questions and you're ready to set up your password. Type your password in here and then confirm it in here. Once you're done, click the reset button at the lower right. After you've clicked that reset button and it's processed, you should see the following screen and see the green checks at the bottom over here. This confirms that your password has been set up. One last thing about our password reset tool. If you use the tool to change your password, make sure to update it on your computer or any mobile devices you use to access your St. Peter's account. Now, let's talk about your St. Peter's email or Peacock Mail. Peacock Mail is powered by Google, so if you're familiar with Google and Gmail, you'll know how to use Peacock Mail. With your St. Peter's University email, you do have unlimited storage space, access to Google Drive and Google Apps. Your student email address is yours to keep forever. Keep in mind that the university will communicate with you through this email only. They will not communicate with you through your personal email address. Make sure you check your St. Peter's email often. To log in, all you have to do is go to gmail.com and enter your username at stpeters.edu, which is your email address, along with the password that you set up. For our previous example, if my name is Kevin Peacock and my username is ppeacock20, my email address at St. Peter's will be ppeacock20 at stpeters.edu. One thing to keep in mind about your St. Peter's account is you want to make sure that you're logged into it when you're accessing Blackboard. If you're logged into a personal Gmail account instead, it could cause issues with logging in and accessing or accessing certain files. Next, we'll talk about Blackboard. All enrolled students have a Blackboard account and all professors will use Blackboard for their classes. You'll find your course syllabus, assignments, course documents, discussion board, and even exams here. You'll be using the Blackboard system to access courses. Make sure that you log in at least a few days before your courses begin with the instructions that we provide to make sure that you can access. If you have any technical issues, please make sure to contact us at service desk at stpeters.edu. All correspondence that's sent on Blackboard, including announcements from the instructors, should go to your Peacock Mail. Make sure that you check this often. Generally, there's two ways to access Blackboard. One is through our My Apps page, which is the easiest way to access. The other way is, if you're already in the St. Peter's email, expanding the waffle and then scrolling down to click the tile. I'm going to demonstrate both of these. Firstly, on the My App site, this is what you'll see, all the tiles that you have access to through your St. Peter's account. One of them is Blackboard, so all you have to do is click on it to access Blackboard. The other way is if you're logged into your Google account, and you can tell by expanding the upper right hand corner, then if you click the waffle over here, Google Apps, you can scroll down 
and from here access the Blackboard tile. You can do this from your email, you can do this from your calendar, you can do this from Google Docs. Basically anything where you're logged into your St. Peter's email account. Please note that if you try to log into Blackboard from a personal email account, you won't be able to access it and you'll get an error message. If you do have this issue and switching your Google account isn't working, make sure to read the article that we published down here or contact our service desk. After you've successfully logged into Blackboard, this is the page that you'll normally see. In the middle is information about services that may be of help to you, and also general announcements. At the upper right is a little profile area that consolidates all your courses and gives you information about settings and notifications. On the right side is your course list. To enter a course on Blackboard, simply hover over the name and click it to enter that course. Once you're inside a course on Blackboard, this is what you generally see. You'll see a left menu, and once you click on an area of the left menu, that content will appear in the middle pane. You can always go back to your course list by clicking either My Institution or Courses. Let me explain the left menu a little bit. The best way to get started is in the upper left, in the Start Here area. This generally gives you information about the course, including any textbooks you may have and information about your instructor. The Announcements area may contain announcements that may be helpful to your course. The Syllabus and Schedule area should contain a syllabus and or a course schedule. Your course's content will often appear in a folder called Week by Week, but it might be called Content, or Chapters, or Day by Day, or Unit by Unit, or something similar. Usually, this is where your assessments and assignments are too, but they may be in a separate folder on your course menu such as assessments and rubrics. The discussion board is an area of your course where you can communicate with your classmates and respond to a professor's discussion assignments. We'll talk more about this in a little bit. This area is where you can access your grades and library information, as well as communicate with your classmates. Finally, down below, these helpful resources appear at the bottom for instructional and technical support. Your professor may use assignments in your course, so let's talk about how to submit an assignment in Blackboard. First, enter the area of your course that has the assignment. As I mentioned, you might find them in week by week, but they also might be in assessments and rubrics. Usually on the syllabus or the Start Here area, the professor will tell you where the assignments are located in the course. You can tell us an assignment by this icon over here, which has a clickable link. In order to enter the assignment, click on the link of the assignment's name. Here's where you have more information about the assignment itself. If the professor has given a due date, you'll be able to see that, and you'll be able to see the points possible. You'll be able to see all the instructions in the assignment and the description. If the professor has added a rubric, you'll be able to expand this to view the rubric of how you'll be graded. If the professor has enabled the Safe Assign tool, which is the plagiarism checker, you'll see this disclaimer over here, letting you know that your paper will be checked by Safe Assign. In terms of actually submitting your paper, there's two options, Write Submission and Browse My Computer. We strongly recommend that you use Browse My Computer. You can upload many different types of files, including Word documents, that's DOCX, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, text documents, or PDF files. We strongly recommend that you do not upload pages files, that's .pages, or Google Doc files, that's gdoc, or zip files, as these will not be able to be read by your instructor. In order to upload your assignment here, simply click Browse My Computer and get the file. Now, if you don't want to upload your assignment, or you don't have an assignment to upload, you can click the Write Submission box. This will allow you to type out your assignment or copy and paste from outside. Now, what you'll normally see when you expand this for the first time is something like this, with one row of icons. We recommend that you click the little icon to the right to expand it to give you more options. This will help you customize whatever you're typing. For example, if I want it to be bolded, I can simply click the icon for bold. If 
If I want to be italicized, I can click the icon for italicized. If I want to get rid of this formatting, click the eraser icon to the upper right to remove all formatting. If you're not sure what any of these tools are, hover over it for a second or two and I'll tell you what it does. This is very similar to how Microsoft Word or Google Docs work. Again, our preference is that you use the Browse My Computer button to upload a file rather than to use the text submission area. If you don't have Microsoft Word installed on your computer, you can do your assignments in Google Docs. You can access Google Docs by signing into your St. Peter's email and expanding the waffle or going to stpeters.edu slash myapps and then going to Google Docs from there. I've created my assignment in Google Docs. To submit it on Blackboard, what I need to do is go to File, and then go to Download, and then download it either as a Word document or a PDF. Once I've downloaded it as a PDF, I can go back to Blackboard, and I can click the Browse My Computer button to add my file. All I have to do is select the file, and then click Open, and it'll be attached. At the very bottom over here, there's a comments area. You can type out a comment for your professor. Please do not type out your entire assignment here as it will be very difficult for the professor to read. When you're done, you can click submit. If you're still working on it and want to come back to it later, you can click save draft. Just remember that in order for the professor to see it, you're going to have to come back to it and click the submit button to pass it through. Once you click the submit button, it'll take a couple of seconds. Make sure that you stay on this page. After you click the submit button and it's gone to the next page, you should see your assignment appear. If you don't see your assignment appear or there's an error message, then you might need to resubmit your assignment. At the same time as you clicking the submit button, you'll also get an email receipt. The email receipt will have a timestamp letting you know exactly when you submitted the file and to which course. Here's a helpful resource on how to submit assignments, which essentially covers the same steps that we just talked about now. Submitting assignments through the Blackboard mobile app is somewhat similar. Just keep in mind that you'll want to upload a file for your professor to be able to read and review on your assignment. Speaking of the Blackboard app, you can get this for free on the Google Play and Apple stores. You can do a lot of what you need in your classes using the Blackboard app. Just keep in mind though, we do recommend that you use a desktop or a laptop computer when taking tests. If you search for the Blackboard app, you might see two things, Blackboard and Blackboard Instructor app. For a student, you'll want to download the one called Blackboard. It looks exactly like this. Download the app, then open it. Then search for St. Peter's University and log in with your St. Peter's account information. You may be asked to participate in one or more discussion boards when in a Blackboard course. If you've ever used a discussion board before or used Yelp or left comments on YouTube or any other website that accommodates comments, you'll find this to be somewhat similar. To start, we go to a course's discussion board by clicking the discussion board button. To get to the discussion board, we click on the discussion board button on the left side of our course. Your instructor will set up forums, which basically contain the topic, assignment, or project you're being asked to contribute to. Click on the name of a forum to enter it. For example, if I wanted to go to Discussion 1, I click on Discussion 1 Analysis of Final Fantasy 4 to enter that forum. There's two possible things that can happen next. If your professor has set up your forum as a standard forum, then when you click on the name, you'll be able to see all the posts and threads that your fellow classmates have made. To reply to them, click on the name of the thread, and you'll be able to see what they did, and then click the reply button to create a reply. Once you're done typing out the reply, you can click the submit button. The other possibility is your instructor has created a post-first forum. For example, Analysis of Final Fantasy IV, 
I can see that there are three total posts in here, and I haven't read any of them, made by two people. Since this is a post first forum, if I go in, I'm not able to see the other students' contributions until I make my own thread. Once I click create thread, I'll see the description, which contains the instructions, and then from here, I can type out my subject and message. The subject should typically be your name and perhaps a synopsis of your reply. In the message, you type what you want to add to the discussion, answering the questions that your professor has posted. From here, you can type out or copy-paste in your response. You can also add file attachments if these are required. Once you're done, click the submit button and your thread will be posted. In a post first forum, once your thread is posted, you'll be able to see all the other students who contributed and click on their threads to reply to them. To reply, simply hover over the student who you want to reply to and click the reply button. Make sure to pay attention to your professor's discussion board rules and requirements. Different professors may have different requirements on the length of your replies and how frequent they need to be. Next, let's talk about checking your grades. At the left side of your course, there should be a My Grades button. Click on this to view your grades. Here's the My Grades button in this course. When I click on it, I can see my grades. This page shows all the assignments in your course, when they're due, and when there was last activity on them. You can also sort and filter by assignments that have been graded, upcoming assignments, and assignments that you've submitted that haven't been graded yet. If you see a yellow dot next to your assignment, it means you've submitted it to your professor, but they haven't graded it yet. If you see a blue dot, it means that you've either saved it as a draft and haven't submitted it yet, or you haven't fulfilled the requirements of the assignment. For example, Discussion 1 requires you to reply to at least two classmates. In our previous example, we created our thread, but we only replied to one classmate. In order for our professor to be able to grade us, we need to be able to reply to two or more. Next to your score, if you see Word Bubble, you can click on it to get feedback. You can also drill into the test by clicking on the name of the test or assignment to get more information. If I click on the name of an assignment, for example, assignment hidden in the leaves over here, I can view the full markup for this assignment, as well as any comments my professor has left me, including the grade. If I want to see more information about the assignment and the comments that they made, I can click on the individual comments and they'll appear highlighted on the right side. If there's a lot of them, I can click on the name of the comment itself and it'll show me where it is in context of my paper. I can also change the view so I can see just the annotations the professor has made. Or I can see the general outline, if there's an outline. From here, I can also print, download, or I can search my paper for words. This is the general feedback to the learner that my professor has given me. Some professors might give video or even audio feedback. To get feedback from a test or a quiz that you've taken, there's an additional step. Click on the name of the test or quiz on the left side. Here, it'll show all attempts that you've made on the test or quiz. In order to get the feedback, click under where it says Calculated Grade. This will let you view your test results. Please keep in mind though, what is available to you in test results is up to what information your professor has decided to share with you. Finally, you can check your grades on Blackboard by spanning your profile in the upper right hand corner and clicking on the checkbox icon. This will show all your courses and the combined grades, allowing you to drill down for more information.
Please keep in mind that grades posted on Blackboard may differ from the official grades for your midterm and final on your transcripts. These grades can be found on Spirit Online. Spirit Online is a one-stop shop where you can register for classes, view and pay tuition, add funds to your one card, and view your grades. You can also apply for graduation from here too. In order to get here, go to the stpeters.edu webpage. On the stpeters.edu webpage, go to Students. From Students, within the toolkit, click on Spirit Online. You'll be asked to log in, put in your user ID and your password. Once you click the Submit button, it'll say Welcome and your first name, and you'll be able to access the various portals. For Students, click on Students. There's a lot of information under the areas here. Under Accepted Applicants, it's where you can update your personal information. Under Registration, it's where you can search for and register for courses. Under Academic Profile, it's where you can check your grades and order transcripts. And finally, under Financial Information, it's where you can pay your bill, check account balances, or add funds to your one card. Next, let's talk about collaboration tools we'll be using at St. Peter's. Your classes may use Google Meet or Zoom for synchronous collaboration and discussion. These sessions may be used for projects, assignments, and assessments. Make sure that you attend these as if you were attending a class in person, and if you're unable to make it, let your professor know in advance. Your professor will let you know which tool will be used as well as when your sessions will be held. Best practice for synchronous session on Meet or Zoom, make sure that you mute yourself when you enter your discussion. You'll be able to unmute yourself when your professor asks you to speak. Google Meet is going to be easy to get into. Simply click on the link in the email from your professor or the Blackboard course announcement at the time and date of your class session to join the meeting. Generally, we advise you to do this up to five minutes earlier so that you can get into the meeting on time. You should receive an email from an announcement or directly from your professor with a link to the meeting itself. Once you click on the meeting link, click the Join Now button to join. If you want to turn on your camera, then make sure your camera icon is enabled. Zoom will be a little bit different. In order to get into your St. Peter's Zoom account, you'll have to activate it first by going to the stpeters.edu My Apps page and following the instructions. Let's demonstrate this. From stpeters.edu slash My Apps, scroll down on the tiles until you get to the Zoom icon. When you get to the Zoom icon, click it. The first time you do this, you may be asked to verify your email address. Make sure that you do this and check your email for the verification. Then follow the steps to activate your account. Once you've activated your Zoom account, you can access it by going to zoom.us and checking out your account, or if the professor has set up a Zoom link in your Blackboard course, simply go to that Zoom meeting link or Zoom link, and you'll be able to see all the upcoming meetings and the recordings from those sessions if the professor has enabled recordings. Both Zoom and Google Meet have free apps. Make sure to access these from the Google Play or Apple Store if you need to use your phone or mobile device to join your class meetings. These are what the icons look like. As mentioned, some of your classes may use Google Meet and some may use Zoom, so it's a good idea to become familiar with both. I've included links to Google Meet and Zoom training to let you know what to expect. So far, everything we've discussed is applicable to all students, regardless of whether you're going to be taking classes on campus or online. If it's going to be on campus, there's a few additional things you'll need to know. Many buildings on campus have wireless access. If you want to connect to Wi-Fi with your computer, it needs to be registered to the network. Under your wireless connections, look for SPU-students. Requirements for laptops and computers are Windows 7 or higher or Mac OS X or higher. Chromebooks work well too. Log in using your St. Peter's University email and password.
For more information on wireless policy and access points, go to stpeters.edu slash ITS slash documentation. When submitting assignments on Blackboard, make sure you use a strong wireless or wired connection. For printing on campus, you'll need to swipe your one card to use the printer. At the beginning of each term, your student account will be credited with $50 worth of free printing on campus. Each black and white page printed will debit 10 cents, but color pages may cost more. After your free prints are used, any flex dollars you may have are debited automatically. Need to print more than this? Use your flex dollars for extra prints. You can pay using your credit card on Spirit Online or pay by cash at the enrollment services desk. If you're printing on campus, you'll also need to install the Pharos Chrome print extension. Here's how. First, open up Google Chrome and make sure you're logged into your St. Peter's account. Next, click the puzzle piece icon at the top and then click manage extensions. On a page that loads, click the hamburger at the upper left. Then go to Open Chrome Web Store on the bottom. Next, we'll use the search feature to search for Pharos Chrome Print. Here's the extension that we want. Go ahead and click on it. From here, let's click Add to Chrome. We want to make sure we give it permission, so let's go ahead and add extension. After we've added the Pharos Chrome print extension, we need to make sure that we turn on sync for our account. I'm going to click link data. And then I'm going to click yes, I'm in. This means that no matter what device I'm using, as long as I'm logged into the Chrome browser, I'll have the same browsing experience across all devices. Now that we've enabled the tool, we have to do a couple more things to make sure that it works properly. Let's go back to that puzzle piece icon. From here, let's find Pharos Chrome Print. Notice that it has a red flag next to it. That means it's not completely set up yet. Once we click it, we'll need to enter our configuration URL. The configuration URL is printcenter.stpeters.edu. And we click the submit button. It should say configuration complete at the bottom. Remember, you have to do this while you're on campus or connected to the campus network in order for this to work properly. To print to a station with Google Chrome, be sure to select Pharos Chrome Printer from your printer list. If you have more than one printer, it should be under See More. You should now be able to swipe at a print station and print a document. For more information on printing, visit www.stpeters.edu slash ITS slash documentation. And for more information on the Pharos browser plugin, make sure to visit our Team Dynamics article. I've included a QR code to it below. If you need to use the computer lab on campus, you'll be asked to log in using your St. Peter's email account. Just use your username and password and you'll automatically be sent to the My Apps page. Please note that all of the lab computers are Chrome bosses so they don't have applications like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, or SPSS installed on them directly. If you want to run these programs, try out the Aporto tool. More information on Aporto, as well as other information about using Chromebox devices, can be found through the IT Client Portal. Finally, we've reached the end of our little orientation tutorial. I hope this has been helpful to you. Remember the most important thing we said from earlier, if you have any technical inquiries, reach out to our service desk at servicedesk.stpeters.edu and we'll be happy to assist. It's been a pleasure to meet you and welcome to St. Peter's. Have a wonderful day.